Hello everyone, uh, my name is Marco and this is a video that uh, is uh, basically a time lapse of my stream which took about an hour. Now what I'm doing here is I'm sketching in the basic shapes of a, a castle wall and a keep wall uh, because I'm doing a color key as a template and as a reference for lighting uh, for this game that I'm working on, Keep the Keep. Um, uh, so far I've been only doing a fairly simplistic approaches to lighting and this time I want to do a different setting just as a way to refresh the view for the player. I'm laying in an underlay and I'm not using Photoshop this time, I'm using MyPaint, which is a free software that I honestly suggest everyone get uh, because it has a specific tool called the Palette Knife, which does an amazing job at mixing colors on the image. Now, if you have an underlaying color and you go and mix it in, it works really well. So that arrow there points to the direction of the light. It's a three-dimensional arrow because I want the light to be shown three-dimensionally. And what I'm trying to pick here is uh, trying to do a sunset color scheme in which the highlights are yellow and the shadows are a bit more towards the purple. And when I say yellow, I mean more like an orangey color. And the point of that is we, we get the blue from the sky mixing with the orange and we get this kind of halfway um, uh, grayed out purple, which works really well, contrasts really well with the orange and also works really well with the green on the grass, which is going to be a main element. Now, by having this, you can kind of look at there and you see four colors. You see that brown at the bottom, which is not even going to be, be there. But you see the yellow, the purple, and the green. And with that, that's enough for me to do a solid representation of volume, okay? And obviously all the colors in between. Now, there's a bit of blue there on the left of the tower as a way to simulate the sun coming, the light coming from the sky. Uh, and I want to do the inside of the keep uh, by having... Um, I'm laying out some color, and this is a dull down brown color because I do not want the city to sort of stand out more, but I do want to have some indications of rooftops and of house shapes and everything, and that's very, that's done very loosely. And again, I'm sort of keeping myself from changing my brush size at this point because all I want to do is put colors on the canvas, so to speak. And you don't want to use the color picker right away because if you do that, what's going to happen is that you're going to end up with the same colors that you already have on the canvas. And that's going to create a really boring, a really boring um, painting, a really boring color palette. One of the great things about mixing colors on a palette is that you run out of color, so you have to mix more. And when you mix more, you're not going to get it 100% right. You're going to get it a little bit off. And that's fine because reality does have those uh, hue shifts. It does have little differences in color here and there. And that's where I'm trying to convey. Now, what's not working right now, it looks like the castle walls are floating on the ground. And that's because I haven't painted in what I'm doing now, which is the highlights from the sun. Once I do that, you'll understand that the difference in color is not a difference in shading, but a difference in material. Because now I add a reference of what the colors would look like if they had the sunlight hit on them. And you kind of go like, okay, so that's a highlight. So the dark bit is just the shadow of the castle on the ground. So now the castle is clearly sitting on the ground. And obviously I need to do that all around, otherwise it'll look weird. Uh, and there's also a problem here with one of the towers. Uh, the tower to the right of the gate wall is uh, painted wrong uh, because it's supposed to be in shadow and I've painted it with color, uh, with bright highlights, I don't know why. Uh, but I kind of figure that out as I try to paint windows on, on these towers adding detail, there we go. And I kind of go like, wow, this window looks a lot brighter than the other one. And I sort of figure out that I made a mistake there. I'm trying to add some bounced light and some ambient occlusion in certain spots of the painting, just as a way to really carve in those shapes and those details and the volumes. It's very important for me to, at this point, what I get is the volumes right. It doesn't mean the perspective has to be perfect, but it has to be that the shapes and the faces of the objects are shaded correctly, at least with the, with the right uh, color. Because by doing that, you kind of solidify the, um, you solidify the, basically the shape and the volumes and the, uh, and the aspect of what you wanted to paint. It becomes solid and becomes clear what the volume and the three-dimensional aspect of the object is. Uh, right now, I'm just adding a few, a few details here with vegetation. And this, these are really just notes uh, for me, later on when I'm modeling the vegetation and, and I'm adding in um, textures for the vegetation, I kind of will aim for these colors, or I'll aim for colors that will then look like this when they're correctly lit. Uh, this case, the tree is all in shadow, so what, all I paint is the reflection from the sky on the leaves. It doesn't really get any direct sunlight from the sun. In this case, uh, 
that tree is also in shadow but I'll, this one is it's almost full light so i'll get a lot of the bright highlights the yellow uh, highlights on the leaves um, which i think kind of i overdid it there a little bit uh, and then i'll be i'll have a tree on the right there which is going to be a very tall thin tree and what i'm going to do is uh, i'll get some rim lighting on that tree um, kind of simulating that it's getting light but it's getting light from back and it's only getting light on the top half in this case i'm adding a, a few banners hanging from the walls because that's kind of the color that i chose chose for the game the, the purple it's going to act as an identifier for the kind of the theme of the game and i'm going to use that on the logo and um and just wanted to see what that would look like in shadow and lit you know if that would be a little too much or hard to understand here I'm uh, lighting some of grass blades, and this is a very short explanation that I did on the stream of grass blades and how they, you know, are lit when they po poke out of the shadow and just the top of the of the grass gets lit. I'm also adding grass around the path here because I think it's a little too uh, too much dirt, um, and it doesn't really help to find the shape at all. So I'm adding grass all around it to see if that makes any difference. And I think I ended up uh, liking it a bit more, but I try to keep myself from using the same color over and over again. Uh, so I think I'm gonna paint the, the tree there on the right now. Yeah, there we go. So you can see I paint a base color and then I add that really harsh highlight at the top, but behind the tree. And that way uh, I can simulate that the light is coming from, uh, from behind it. Uh, I correct, I fixed the shadows here. Obviously the, the, the shadow on the side of the wall has to match with the shadow on the top because they're being cast by the same object and those volumes do connect here and there. Um, and now just adding a few rocks just as a note to what I would like the, the rocks to look in game if I add them in. Being that that lift bit was so empty and of course my camera is gonna crop a little bit more this image, uh, but I just wanted to add this kind of wheat field there to simulate. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, take care and I'll see you later.